sound booth back there and the communion table, all, that you, the stage, all pews, all pews re, reprocessed or re, repurposed. Yeah. Uh, so what else I wanted to already? Okay, so if you're watching online, you may see there's two part twos. So one of them basically there was a technical thing and it didn't it didn't properly upload. So it's restarted. So if you're watching online or if you guys go watch this stuff later, there'll be one there'll probably be a short part two that I gotta end up deleting, but anyway, so we should be good now. We should be able to delete it, I think. Yeah. So we're up. Yeah. We're live in Clearwater. We're live. <laughs> okay. I want to start to, well, I just, just wanted to thank you guys for coming out and um, being participating in this and reigniting the sound of God in the body of Christ is very, very important. I mean, we've been silent too long. Or, or if we haven't been silent, we've been speaking the wrong things. <laughs> When our young people run the other way, you know. <laughs> okay. So we, we're going now into frequencies. Um, and I, that should be on your page. I forget what page it is. My pages are different from yours. It says the value different. It's right after, oh, wait a minute. I'm on my wrong page. It says sounds and worship. Sound, page seven, sounds and worship. All right, so so there is when if you are a musician or you know anything about music, when you go to tune your instrument, everybody tunes to the same sound, right? It's the it's called hertz, and it's 440 hertz. So when I play the guitar and I tune my guitar, I tune it to four. When she plays the violin, she does 440. So we're all on the same page. So that is a relatively new turning tuning. Uh, level. It's never, for the anciently, in ancient past, um, until recently, like in the 50s, it was, we, orchestras and everything tuned their instruments to something different. But I'm getting in my head of myself because God is restoring some of the frequencies that are out there besides the ones that we just are commonly used for. Now, my contention is that Jesus is the anointing and he can anoint whatever he wants to anoint. He can anoint for forward if he wants to, and um, and he does. And but there are different sounds, different instruments, and different frequencies, and they are, I think, here for our awareness, for s different strategies for healing and restoration, because God's heart is for His body, His bride, to be healed and restored to her beauty that she has been designed to walk in. And so there is like numerous methods in the New Testament that God gives us to, to gain our healing, right? Like call the elders. How many use that anymore? Not very few use that. Yeah, you do. I'm always getting called. <laughs> yeah, Phyllis does. Call the elders of the church. Well, and let them come over, anoint you with oil. And, and the prayer of faith will, will save the one of six. And so you have to protect your elders. You need to call and invite them to come lay hands on you and anoint you with oil. Okay? Because that means that they're protected and that when they come, if you have, because it doesn't say only if the disease is not contagious. Go, go over and anoint them with sick. <laughs> doesn't give that caveat, right? So, so to protect your elders and your leaders, your pastors, or whoever, your apostles, whatever, how you want to label them, and you, they want to, you need to be, you're sick, you can't get up and come to church, hey, I'm sick, will you come over and anoint with oil and pray with me? And you have, you have a, a, a disease that's contagious. They can come in and walk in your house with faith and with assurance that they are protected from that thing, and you have the assurance that you're going to get healed. But if the le leader just decides he's going to barge in your house and pray for you, I'm coming over and I'm praying for you. So let me in. Well, I really don't want you to come over. Well, I think I need to because I, you know, 
Not so sure you're protected there. It just depends. I'm not saying you're not, but I know the other way is a sure thing. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind about that. There's, so there's all kinds of strategies. You know, there's believing, there's confessing, there is, um, you know, just, just standing on the word and just all kinds of stuff, having group prayer and, you know, receiving the peace anointing. There's all kinds of ways. He wants you healed. It is his will. And so he is given us every opportunity, every advantage, every strategy. He's making us aware. So if that one doesn't work for you, try this one. Maybe you can have faith for this one. <laughs> okay, so sound and music and worship have been important from the beginning. And these verses that we see here in Isaiah, these verses are referring to Lucifer and his fall. He was the covering cherub with unmatched beauty and sound. Was he not? He had sound all around him. And, and it says, verse 11 says, Your pomp and the music of your harps have been brought down to shale. Maggots are spread out as your bed beneath and you, and worms are your covering. And so, you know, th I think in the Hebrew, I'm not sure where else it might say, may, okay, maybe let's go down here in Ezekiel 28, 13. It says, You were in Eden in the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper. Sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and, and pipes were, was prepared for you on the day you were created. Now, there's some Hebrew teachings that talk about that he was like an instrument with pipes and tendrils. Or that was part of his, his physical anatomy. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but he was music. He was sound, and that was his, that was, that was his role. Did you, did you hear, have you heard that before? Yeah, and that was his role. That And so sound has always been from the beginning. I know if you've ever done any missions work at all and you go to countries that you don't speak their language, but if you sing, you can communicate with them. They understand music. Everybody understands. It's universal. Everything, everybody understands understands music. And so, so this music is very powerful. And I know people who have gone to heaven. I know Jesse Duplantis, you know, people like that. And other people I've known gone to heaven and they tell their experiences there and they describe things and everything sings. Everybody sings. How are you today? I'm so good. <laughs> they sing better than that. But that's, you get the concept, right? There was, oh, yeah. The animals sing. Everything sings. Everything. The flowers sing. Everybody has a frequency, and they're like, ooh, they're buzzing. All the bees are singing. Everybody's singing. Okay, so everything sings. And, you know, the Bible tells us that even the stars sang, right? If it doesn't tell us that the stars sang, you know, when, when he was created. Where were you and the sons of God when I created, when the morning stars were singing? Do you know that they have measured stars now and they all emit sounds like a song? They're still singing. They're still singing. So the stars are singing and, um, <clears throat> you know, music is a great form of communication. The Niagara Falls, they measure the frequencies of Niagara Falls, and I'm sure it's not just Niagara Falls, any other large fall like that, that they were able to, to capture the full spectrum of sound coming out of the Niagara Falls. So what it, what it got is isn't God's voice like the voice of many waters? Yeah. 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 So he has the whole spectrum of sound in his in his voice, and I've also read that if you put the sound spectrum on a chart, and the chart was three foot long, that what the human ear could hear would be about three quarters of an inch on that. So there's a lot of sound and frequency out there that we're not hearing audibly with our ears you know just think of a dog whistle yeah. yeah we don't hear that right and that's barely that's only slightly below our normal healing hearing anyway and I think we're 20 and I think it's it's a little bit lower than that so uh so there's a lot of so this so this covering cherub he went brought he went down to Sheol with all his music and and guess what erupts out of Sheol Music from Sheol now, right? It burps out acid and smoke, and it comes out as demonic sounds. And there's, there is a sound on the earth that is demonic. It's not all heavenly 
It's not all heavenly because of, of the one who orchestrates it. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about uh, a tone that I just discovered. It's, ca it's called Diabolus, Diabolus in Musica. That's in your paper there. The devil in music. And it's a, it's a, it's a page seven, I think it is. Okay. So it's a, it's a real musical thing. Um, it's not a, it's necessarily a new age or spiritual thing. It's been around in the church from the, from the beginning for a millennia. And it's called the devil's triad or the devil's tri, 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 tri tritone. And it, 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 it emits an, an unpleasant sound, an eerie sound. And even the church was discouraged. You know, the church in the early ages, and especially after the medieval, they, they were the ones who produced the music. They were the music of the earth, man. Everybody, the best music came out of the church. And so there was a lot of mu musicians in the church, and they were discouraged, and some of them were even forbidden for using this triad and because of the sound. Now, the monks, I think, used it occasionally when they were singing uh, uh, about the apocalypse to give the feeling of doom or dread um, and and other people use it like for Halloween music you can make it feel scary and then um, it's also it, the, the Hertz is 719 so it's a different kind of Hertz it's known as the devil's tone uh, and it's used in heavy metal that's why you saw the crystal was all disorganized with heavy metal it was used um, by groups such as Black Sabbath, Metallica, Jimi Hendrix, and Purple Haze. You know um, that song, In the God of the Vida. Remember that? <laughs> that made my age remember that. <laughs> In the God of the Vida. Yeah, you remember that one? I forget who did that. Well, you would know. What? Iron Butterfly. That was their one big hit, huh? Yeah. Yes, right. That's, that was going to be my next. That was going to be my next trivia. <laughs> Steve took my trivia right out of my mouth. His drama drummer. He was saying in the Garden of Eden, probably stoned, and he heard in the God of La Vida, and it stuck. But I looked at the words. The words are not. It's just a love song. Take my hand. Let's walk in the garden. That's about. The, extent, the words are not necessarily demonic, but the tune is it's full of these tritones that, that give you this sense of foreboding. It's about forbidden love. It's about defiance. It's something scary in music for things like Halloween funerals and by the monks to express the apocalypse. Now, um, it's used to build tension that even it, I played with uh, it this morning with uh, Jason on the keyboard in the key of C. You can, pr you can play any two notes in the, of the, on the white keys, any two of them, and they sound harmonic and beautiful, nice tone. But if you, use, if you play the B and the F together, it gives you that Halloween feel. <laughs> and I, it, it is true. It's like, it's a little bit dissonant, but it gives you that sound. And, um, and so that's, that, and it, that's, that interval is called the devil's interval. Isn't that funny? The devil's interval is in there. Uh, so at this point, could you grab the mic in the back, uh, Phyllis? And um, because the devil has a sound, and on the sound, the sounds are waves, right? And just like we surf waves in the water, these waves are often surfed by entities as well. The anointing likes to surf waves on the sound of worship, the sound of praise and the sound of word. The devil likes to surf on his own waves. And when there's sounds in your life that cause destruction, there is a wave and a continuous echo that happens. So I'm going to let Phyllis explain how that happened for her. Okay, so last year I was sitting at my computer and I was, I was working, and my keys fell off the desk and they hit the floor. And immediately I felt like a failure. Like you're gonna, you're ruined, you're not gonna be able to do this, your life is over. I mean, just like that. And I sat there just <gasps> like sinking in it. 
And I thought, what, what just happened? And then I realized my keys had hit the floor. So I looked at the keys, and the, it was the sound. When I fell and I broke my leg and fractured my wrist and road raged my face, my keys hit the ground. And that sound, I was alone in the middle of the road in the rain with my dog, and there were people around me, but nobody came to help me. And as I laid in the middle of the road with a broken leg, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, this is it, right? So it was that sound that triggered it. So last, last week, my daughter was in a, in, right after our seminar, my daughter was in a um, car crash. Someone rear-ended her and totaled her car with my seven and a half month old granddaughter in the back seat, right? It happened like two hours after the seminar was over. And so I, I called Kathleen and she said, did the baby cry? And I went, well, I don't know. Baby's fine, they're fine. She said, well, call Megan and find out if the baby cried. So she explained to me why and I remembered the keys so it all made sense to me. So I called over there and I said, Megan, did the baby cry? And she said, well, <laughs> mom, you know, she's really sound sensitive. She's got very acute hearing. She was screaming and screaming and screaming. And I said, okay, I'm coming over. So I went over and I, t and, I, and I held Reagan and I looked at her and I said, I command every spirit of fear that is attached to you through the sound of a cr car crash that's come over your DNA, I command that spirit of fear assigned with that mm -hmm. sound to loose you now in the name of Jesus. And this little seven and a half month old went just like this. <laughs> and then released because that's what she did when she hit. Right? That whole thing, it was like she bit into a lemon. And uh, you can't manipulate the look on a seven and a half month old face. But that, 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 that all resonated with me with sound. And that's, you know, I want to ask Kathleen if I could share that because that, that unlocked everything with me with a lot of stuff that I'm done. Because a lot of time, a lot of you have heard me talk about the girl with the claustrophobia who, when we were praying for her, she got locked in her closet when the time she was five years old, right, by her brother. And she had severe claustrophobia. But when we prayed for her, we recognized that it was, it was something else. God had told us train. So we went back and um, called out, Lord told me, any spirit of claustrophobia that came in while your grandfather was stuck on a death camp train coming out of Auschwitz, right? And this thing left, right? Just left. I didn't know that. We got into a long dissertation after that. But what we've assessed since then, and now with all of this, is that it was the sound of the door shutting her in that closet that activated that, that sound in her DNA that was there for the three to four generations. If you study epigenetics, you get this. That same sound of that door locking on that train is what happened when the door shut to her on that closet. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it started that spirit of fear. So the, the, the traumas of the three and four generations back can be associated with sounds and I just wanted to share that with you because I think a lot of times we overanalyze, like, what's wrong with me? How'd this happen? I was just fine a minute ago, and now I've got this thing, and did it, and you get into this long rabbit trail. It could be something coded into a sound bite or a generational sound that's triggering you. Amen. Yeah, good job. Okay, take that. Yeah, and we're going to hit that where geneticists, of, they have something called mitochondria DNA. Where that's what you need to, and they're also known as ancestral DNA. That's where they take your DNA and figure out your bloodline. And, the, and that they have discovered that thoughts affect that DNA strand. Not only your thoughts, but the thoughts in that bloodline get traveled down in the DNA and can affect it. So that's, that's basically what. And, you know, with, with her granddaughter, uh, it was an attack assignment against her granddaughter to get her in a, to be a fearful person because she is born and destined to be a warrior and to like her mother because her her daughter Megan is like a warrior bride. She's like, you know, six three and she's an Amazonian and you know and you don't mess with her right. She has that projection on her that that and um, you know and I know Reagan has inherited that that fearlessness, and the devil doesn't like it. He doesn't like fearlessness. He wants fear. So if he could set her up with something that no one's paying attention to, you know, don't pay any attention to me behind the curtain here while I terrorize this baby for, for life. 
and you know similar sounds, and they're probably I wouldn't be surprised to me if they're 719 hertz. <laughs> you know, the sound of metal crashing, right? That same sound, and it could be triggered through anything. It could be through music. Some people listen to music, and and they get all whacked out. Yeah. Okay. Heavy metal. Yeah, heavy metal right there. Thank you, thank you, Marcy. Heavy metal. Two metals, two heavy metals smashed to one another, right? Yes. Well, everybody's tuned to 440. You go to church, it's 440. There's only one time, one, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot to music than just the sound of music. There's a lot, there's a lot, there it has, okay, music is, it's very important who you have on the stage. What is their life doing? I don't care how good of a musician they are. But if they're sleeping with somebody, drinking, doing drugs, and they're up on stage, you've got a sound coming in your church. It's going to cause a rep repercussions in that same arena. You open the door, right? So that affects the worship. And, and that's why we're very strict about who is up there. You know, you could be ten times better than anybody up there, but that doesn't matter to us. Wait, wait, wait. What's that? How's the symphony or going to the opera? They're 442. So, so when, we do, when we do these different sounds, these different frequencies, what you have to be careful, because you can find them all over the Internet, but a lot of them are woo-woos. Okay, so watch out for the woo-woo sounds. What you have to go back is find who created it. Who created the source, the heart behind it, the purpose behind it. It's very, very, it's very, very important. It changes everything. Yeah, so this 440 hertz is used today, and it was introduced about 1940 and standardized in the 1950s. This is in your notes. Um, there are a lot of conspiracy theories, and they are just conspiracy theories, but honestly, these days, I'm believing a lot of conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> I'm becoming a believer. <laughs> oh, yeah. All, these all that's a conspiracy theory. Well, it turns out to be true. But anyway, I... I these are just theories. They claim Hitler used the 440 to cause confusion and irritation in enemy troops, and he would pipe it in over enemy troops to make them irritated and disoriented. Um, some say they were instigated by the Rockefeller Foundation so that they could have control and um, have their own musical cult, cult to control. Um, others say that, uh, that the rebellion among young people in the 60s with their, the aggression by rock and roll music was all produced with the instruments tuned to 440. Tuned to 440. So, um, you know, and 432 was used by Beethoven and other classical artists. That's mainly what they use is 432 before the 440 came on. Now, one, one, one Sunday morning, I, my kids were doing, they were the worship leaders, and I asked them, I begged them, could you turn your instruments to 432? And with their eyes rolled, they did. Because <laughs> I'm mom, and I have to. But they did. They turned everything to 432 one more, and we did worship. And I wanted to see what happened in the house. And it was a whole different atmosphere. It produced a whole different atmosphere. And 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 the, Dave Mundell walks in the front door and goes, what's, what's, what's different about this music? He knew it right away, and he's not even a musician. I don't think he can even sing a tune, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Dave Ivory. <laughs> don't tell Dave. <laughs> but he noticed it. He was the first person that noticed that there was something, a difference. About, it's, okay, it's only 8 hertz difference. It's hardly hearable. You can hardly hear the difference, right, at your a classic musician. It's hard to hear the difference when you play something, um, that slight difference. But he heard it, so it, it, affects, it affects you. And, you know, when you start singing a cappella, 
you know, like there's music at 440, hallelujah, hallelujah, and then all the instruments stop, right? And we all continue singing hallelujah, holy, 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 whatever. It, we started at 440 because that's where we matched our voices. It drops to 432 because that's the natural place your voice wants to go is 432. And, I th and I, I'm beginning to think, you know, like when you, you know, like the New Agers, and they go, oh, um, you know, they do that silly thing. And it's not really silly. There's a reason for it. And then um, it actually, in the early church, they would chant, amen, amen, but the, for the same effect. And I really believe that was 432, just calibrating the thing. But they were, their source was right, you see. The source was right, and they weren't opening themselves up to demonic spirits. They were opening themselves up to the Holy Spirit because amen is actually a Hebrew word, by the way. Um, okay, let's see, where are we? This is not working. Okay. 432 is considered to be the universal hurts and more fundamental to nature, therefore more in tune with your body. So the gematria of 432, the numerical value of it, is the same as yada for praise. It's in the book right here. Shalom for peace. Nefesh for soul. Yasha to save. You know, Yeshua, Yasha to save. And Saul and David playing the, playing the harp, the, the, the ancient tune. You know, it's, it's David played the harp, right? And what happened? Dem demons left Saul, correct? So you can see, and he was not playing 440. They have found a lot of, ancient instruments and able to decipher the tunings. It wasn't, they used a lot of different tunings. 440 wasn't one of them. 432, lower, higher. Some of them, there's a, there's a frequency called the key of David, which we're going to get to here in a little bit. And, um, and all right. So now, so this 432 is related to something called the Schumann's Resonance. Because the Schumann's re the resonance is known as the heartbeat of Mother Earth, you know, Gaia and all that. <laughs> that's, how they, that's where they get that. But there is actually a canopy around the globe up to the ionosphere that is like a, it's like a I'm going to call it a hoopa. You know what a hoopa is? Okay, hoopa is a canopy. The Bible, the Hebrew language means a canopy or a wedding tent something that covers, people get married under hoopas, it's the bridal chamber, okay, it's a hoopa, it's called a hoopa, and um, so I'm calling it a hoopa, it wraps, it wraps around the earth, and in this atmosphere up here, there's a lightning, and it's going, not it's coming down, it's going across, one to another, lightning and thunder, lightning and thunder, and they've measured the electromagnetic hertz of that particular area, and it's Average is about 7.8, 7 7.83 to 8. It fluctuates very little, but it's been steady for as long as they've been learning to measure it. So that, that particular hertz harmonize, harmonizes and resonates with 432. It's just a different, like five octaves up. So they're exactly the same, and they resonate. So if something is in the same hertz, if I, if I pluck that guitar over there, her violin, if it's tuned to the same thing, is going to vibrate too. So it, it, it resonates and sympathetically sounds the same. It calibrates to itself. It's almost like a tuning fork. So the Schumann's resonant is like a tuning fork to the earth. And, and it regulates and keeps, keeps people. Um, if, you, if you operate in that frequency and you're in tune with it, you're less likely to have headaches and anxiety and nervousness. Now, I did read um, back in 2017, there was some major spike in the Schumann resonance. And I have to tell you that 2017 was a very tumultuous year for me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, you, Schumann's resonance, <laughs> that's why you are out of sync. <laughs> that's why all this stuff, all hell broke loose in that year, literally. And um, so I, it, I thought it was interesting that there was a, a measurable spike and the Schumann's resonance. So you think, well, where where is this in in the Bible? Well, I'm, I'm, I wrote down this study by a professor Weaver from um, the Max Planck Institute for Behavioral Psychology, and he has some volunteers spend four weeks in an underground bunker, 
that was completely uh, screened out any vibrational uh, frequencies from from the or from the Schumann's resonant anything. And um, after that, they started getting disoriented, and they suffered emotional distress and migraine ha headaches. After only a brief exposure to the Schumann resonance, the volunteer symptoms disappeared. So the same complaints were reported by the first astronauts and the, cosm and the cosmonauts in space. And uh, so mo now modern spacecraft contain a device which simulates the Schumann resonance. Because of this research, some scientists are concerned that all the different man-made electromagnetic waves, such as microwaves, TV, radio waves, and cell phones, that now fill our atmosphere are drowning out the Schumann resonance. And some believe this vibration is like a natural tuning fork, not just for oscillators of the human brain, but for all processes of life. So it does have... Um, an effect of it. So let's just read that. You may not realize it, but each part of your body has its own resonant frequency. Your brain, your heart, each organ, even your DNA has its own unique frequency. So in addition, um, both our brain and heart emit electromagnetic fields, which can change depending on your emotional and physical state. So I know, I know that people have people with cancer. They have measured the, the sound in their body or the resonance, of the, and it's a dissonant sound. It's not harmonic. A healthy person has a, emits a harmonic sound from their DNA. And you think, well, how do they do that? Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. How do they, how do they hear a sound in your body? Well, they have figured out how to do that. Well, fluctuations um, in the signal have been linked to human physical and emotional reactions, including migraine headaches, depression, suicide, and a disruption of the circadian rhythms, like how you sleep. A reduction um, the pineal gland, output of melatonin, and increased incidence of sudden infant death syndrome. And that's from uh, the Physics of Heaven, that book, and I wrote that in there. So it's, you know, the, the resonance is, is generated by excited lightning discharges in that cavity above the earth, and it's maintained at 7.8 to 8 hertz. And uh, there's some study uh, people have done with people who pray for the sick. And they've measured the frequencies off their hands and, dis and discovered that people who have a gift of healing, their frequency of their hands is almost 7.8. The same. Isn't that sound? Oh. Uh, so you look my hand. Uh, Jack Stuckey, uh, they did a study, and they measured the electrical activity of people who were receiving prayer from a group who are praying for them, and he found the, the electrical activity of their brains and body was altered after receiving prayer from groups over a thousand miles away. Wow. Spiritual technology. Yeah, so you can change, you can change the... Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I don't know if that you, you can come heal, but if you... That's what we're going to do in our workshop today. We're going to put some of these frequencies on so that you can experience them. Each one has a little bit of a different flavor and a little bit of a different edge on what they touch in your body. Because, you know, your brain, I think, when it's relaxed is about 8 hertz in there. When it's relaxed, it's, it's a tune. And that's, you know, talk about grounding where you walk barefoot on the ground. That's a real thing. Because you, your skin is touching, you're grounding with the ground, which is resonating with the frequency of, in the canopy. And so you're kind of like putting, you're kind of calibrating everything. And that's why it's really good to go for a walk barefooted if you can't. I, in Florida, there's so much dog poop, I don't know where you got to walk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can only do this on the beach where I can see where I'm walking. <laughs> Yeah, dog poop is, but yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's everywhere. And so I thought, well, Lord, <clears throat> where is the Schumann resonance in the Bible? Where, where do you say that? So I, got it, I put it in there. It's in Job. Job 36, 29. Can anyone understand the spreading of the clouds and the thundering of his pavilion? That word is sukkah. That is, that is sukkah or hoopah, a sukkah. A sukkah is a tabernacle around. 
So he, 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 always, he already called that, that canopy over us a pavilion. So that's what the Bible calls it, a pavilion. He covers his hands with lightning. What's up in there? Lightnings. And he commands it to strike. He is in control of the frequency in the heavenlies. His, his thunder declares it. And the Amplified, it says, it's, the thunder speaks awesomely of him. The cattle also concerning the rising storm. So even the creatures on the earth, the animals are responding to this frequency. I, I, you know, like Noah's Ark, how do the animals know to come into the ark? And which ones? The ones responding, I think, to a certain frequency. Robert, I could tell. Come on up, Robert. Well, we, you know, you were talking about where does it say it in the Bible. And, um, well, he spoke all things into existence. We're created in his image. It has to carry his frequency. Mm -hmm. It can't be anything but. If we're, especially us, if we are created in God's image, right? Everybody says that. We know that. Well, then we have to be carrying the frequency of the Lord. And so does creation. And what has the devil done from the beginning? He simply comes in and tries to pervert uh -huh. the truth with his frequencies, right? So, you know, do you need the word, you know, some specific scripture? Well, she gave you a few just now. But the fact of the matter is he spoke us into existence, and that is a frequency. All sound has frequency. And so it's only... In my mind, it's, it's, it's the only step you can take is that we vibrate just like God vibrates with his frequencies. Amen. And when you're, when you're out of sync with him, you have emotional and physical illnesses. All right. So just, I'm going to continue to read this in Job, though. Um, at this, my heart trembles and leaps from its place. That word vibrates. Your heart vibrates with that, with that same with that same sound. And um, just as a deviation here, we use this in the healing house a lot. In Job, Job 21, 6, it says, even when I remember I'm terrified and trembling takes hold of my flesh, vibrating, a shaking takes hold of my flesh when I remember. We call those echoes, like Phyllis was talking about, memories in your bloodline, memories that you've had that you, you think you're over, but something triggers it again, a sound will trigger it, a vision will trigger it, and you'll have the same emotional, the same physical side effects as the initial impact of that trauma. So even when I remember, my flesh just trembles and is terrified. So I, and then in verse 2 here it says, listen closely, listen closely to the thunder of his voice and the rumbling that goes out from his mouth because he wants to calibrate you to his sound. <laughs> Under the whole heaven, let it... Let, under the whole heaven, he lets it loose and his lightning to the ends of the earth. And after it, a voice roars, his thunder, he thunders with his majestic voice. He does not restrain the lightnings with his, when his voice is heard. And so like Robert was talking about, his voice is constantly being spoken through the sounds of thunder and lightning in above you in the ionosphere. They are representations of his voice. And then... There follows a sound, a roar, the thundering with his majestic voice, and he keeps releasing the lightning even while his voice is being heard. God thunders with his voice wonderfully, doing great things which we cannot comprehend. So this um, brings us to the tuning of, of uh, 432 tuning of instruments. And I told you this already, that the frequency 432 resonates with the frequency of 8 hertz and therefore mathematically consistent with the frequency of the universe. It's actually, I think, five octaves up. And it resonates just beautifully. Um, and the natural pitch of the universe gives a harmonic and pleasant sound more, more than 440 does. And that's why you can sing to your plants. And you can sing to your body. Do you, um, do you know that in the morning... There's no birds at night, hardly, you know, rare to hear any sound of birds at night, right? Until the sun comes up. And what happens? The birds begin to sing. 
and they sing in that same hertz of the, as the earth and the plants stomata, which allows them to take in the sun for, for uh, chlorophyll production, open up at the sound of the birds. So they're working under the same frequency that bees. Yeah, it's very awesome. We played, we played 432 last Wednesday night just for a little bit, and Maria had vision of bees and honey. Well, you know, bees, bees are into frequencies. They do everything according to frequencies. And the whole hive, there's different frequencies in the hive, and each frequency communicates something different to the hive. There's a frequency that the bees admit that tell the queen it's time for you to come out, of, come out now and be the queen. <laughs> and then there's other, you know, the drones have a frequency, the, the worker bees have a uh, frequency, and then there's a frequency, if my understanding is that, before they take off and fly, they, they vibrate either with their legs or their wings to 432, and then they fly. And, uh, you know, even the honey has frequency. Colors have frequency. Colors have frequency. So we're not doing colors this time. Maybe the next time we go over this again, we'll throw colors in there. But colors have frequency and accord to sound. And there's some col the colors and the sound that have the same frequency. It's interesting how that matches up. But we're not, we're not doing that one today. I didn't get around. <laughs> okay, so it says here in verse 96, 12, it says, Let the field be joyful and all that is in it. Then all the trees of the woods will rejoice before you. So the field, let the field be joyful. And all the, do you know, um, we are going to hear, place the Lord from the earth, <clears throat> you sea creatures and all the death. So he's commanding the sea creatures and the animals to begin to worship and praise him. And they praise him in frequencies. Either there's two different frequencies that are calming among creatures, and that's 432, which is the human's resonance, and 528, which is known as the love resonance. When they, and there's a lot of controversy which one's better. I think they're both good. But the color green vibrates at 528, which is the love resonance as well. And, um, you know, all the creatures in the field are in that 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 frequency. So we're going to listen to, this is interesting about crickets, creatures of the field that are worshiping God. So go ahead, let's listen to this one.
that beautiful how they're worshiping God? You almost hear how the holy, holy in there. Yeah, that's powerful. All right, so there's um, there's something else that are ancient, especially in the Gregorian chants. Uh, the monks were an interesting group of people, and if you read history, there's a lot of miracles and healings that were done under the singing of the monks. You know, kind of like these crickets, you know. They're just worshiping, worshiping. And, um, and, but they had different frequencies. They had different tones that, not, that we don't use today. They're called the sol- solvagio tones, frequencies. And they're ancient. They're a six-tone scale. But they actually have found three more. So it's nine, which and I don't really understand this, but it completes some kind of tonal circle that they found all nine now. But it's not like a do, re, mi. It starts off with a, a different, a different tonal, tonal, tonal chart or tonal um, increments. And so, but some modern-day geneticists believe that when sung in sequential harmony, the sounds of the musical tones in the solpeggio scale vibrate at the exact frequencies required to open ourselves to new programming that can be imprinted on our DNA. Our genetic um, biochemists are already using the frequency of 528 to repair DNA that has been damaged. It's known as the love frequency or the miracle tone. And in fact, if you add 528, you get 15, which is the number for rest. Yeah, 528 equals uh, 15, which is rest. Mm Mm-hmm. It's, it's known as the key of the house of David with a harp. 528, yeah. It's known as the key of David. Um, I think, uh, remember the, you know, the Rife machines? You've heard of them? The Rife machine? Uh, a guy, Dr. Rife, he, um, I forget his first name. He, he, he was experimenting with this, and he created um, the frequencies, and, and there's documented people healed of cancer using these frequencies. And, you know, I've known people that have used that and not been healed with it. So, but you have to understand, cancer, cancer for you is different for cancer for her. It's different for cancer because there's, there's myriads of different kinds of cancer cells, resources. And it's, it's, it's just a generic term of cells going haywire. So, you know, there can be, it's not as simplistic as that. There's other factors involved. But... It, there, I think there was like 16 people miraculously healed of cancer by doing this Rife machine, which is, was pipe where they listen to and pipe. You have to put it on your ears and let the vibrations actually go into your body. Um, you, can look, you can look that up. It's called the Rife machine. R-I-F-E. Uh-huh. F-E. F. S. F as in Frank. And, and you know... I don't understand this one either, so I'm just parroting some of this because this is above my pay grade. But um, the number 528 is found in the geometry of the double helix or the entwining double spiral of our human DNA. You know, you know what everybody knows what DNA is, a double helix, right? Geometrically, it comes to 528, which is your DNA, and this is all about DNA repair. So in 2010, a, physi- a physicist, John Hutchison, created a device. Oh, okay, I, I wrote this in here. I didn't really. That emits a combination of audio and radio frequencies based on the solpeggio frequencies, which have the effect of clearing. Oh, this is something. Clearing water pollution. This is a real thing. When the oil spill out in the Gulf, they use solpeggio frequencies to clean the water, yeah. and they did. And Amoto. He did that, they, I think it was in Brazil or some uh, country, I don't know, it was South America or where it was particularly, but the waters were polluted and they called him in there and he, 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 he spoke to the water. He kept speaking to the water, speaking to the water, and it actually cleaned up, the pollution actually cleaned up. So now, um, Obamoto, no, he's not a believer. Uh, he's just a quantum physicist though. I, he may be now after doing all that. <laughs> oh, so what we're, we're doing? We're calibrating because um, things in the physical realm need a little repair or fine tuning, so to speak. So how does God do it? He does it when um, 
he does it through through sound, and he did it through the bones of Elijah, remember that? He did it through a piece of cloth, through Paul's body. He did it um, with the rod of Moses. He did it, um, uh, that brass serpent looking in there. There, I believe there was this, you know, in your eye gates looking at something, the colors coming in, just the vibrations coming in. You know, you look up at the, the pole lifted in the wilderness, even the touching of, of, of Jesus' garment, the hem of his garment, which represented the tassels, represented the very word of God, which is what a vibration, a frequency. And she knew if she calibrated with that frequency of his word that you know, she, would be, she would be healed. And so it just goes to show you that humans are more than just flesh and blood. There's a lot more to you than just the MD's kind of approach. There's more, there's more to that. That's why holistic medicine is... is uh, is something that we need to incorporate to our wellness program. So now, now this is something new um, that I just learned about. It's called ling linguistic wave genetics, um, <clears throat> and it's it, they use it to. It's called wave medicine. It's interesting. They use something called sonification. Sonification is a method of using sound to translate data into something coherent that you can understand like music. So that's what music is. Music basically is defined as organizing sound into something that's definable, you know, definable, something that you can understand and, and, and enjoy. So that leaves rap out to me. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> it doesn't fit the def definition of music. <laughs> or screamo. That's not screamo's worse. All right. And then, um, so this, this linguistic wave genetics was interesting. It, our, our bodies are a song, right? You have the singer, and, and it's like Robert was telling you, you breathe into you, you became a song, you, been, you began singing with the creator, and you've been created by the master singer himself to be in har harmony the, with the goodness of God. And, we, and, and so when you have these strand of notes, so you have a strand of notes, and then... In the cell, you, ha you have the, the strand of notes or like the strand of amino acids, but they have to be divided into threes to be transferable or communicated to the body. So you have a cell, you have a baby, it's grown a cell, all the cells are the same, but the baby needs muscle tissue. So this cell has the information, okay, that's supposed to be a muscle, and so the the amino acids are divided in a sequence that translates or sings a song, muscle, muscle. That one's going to do muscle. This one over here is going to sing a song, and it's going to say brain cell, brain. So you're going to be a bone cell. You're going to be a brain cell. But it all starts out the same, and then it gets translated. So here's, here's an interesting point to you that I found very interesting, that Hebrew originally written is nothing but a strand of letters. There's no punctuation. You don't know when one word starts and another one stops. No, 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 nothing. Until they're divided and in Hebrew into a word has three letters, it is not uh, translatable. Okay? So just like your DNA, until you get the three amino acids together, do you know there are, are 22 amino acids? Light is 22. Right? It just goes on and on like this. Uh, everything matches up very well, and um, we'll see. Let's see. So there's something called that's what it's called gene expression. What I just explained to you is called gene expression, where the genes are are designed to translate into something that your body needs. And it's like it's like a sound. You have you have the conductors. You have the you have all you have the whole organ. You, you're you're like a symphony, and then you have your you're all your players, they're the amino acids, and then you have the conductor, and it, it pulls it up into a readable song. It's just, it's really, be it's really beautiful how it works. And this, link, this wave genetics right now is a, a viable branch of biology and classical genetics. It is considered that it's not, it's not a woo-woo, it's not a holistic thing, it's really part of a regular traditional line of science. So in 1973, um, this Dr. Herdak, he, he um, asserted that our genetic, 
process is, is influenced by our thoughts. And this is what I was telling you before. This is a, gen genes a geneticist. He, he saw that our, our genetic processes are influenced by our thoughts. And so that's why they, like, there's this new field called epigenetics where you can change. You don't ha you're not in a mold and that cannot be changed. You are malleable because God made you that. He gets so you can be transformed. So it doesn't really matter what kind of thoughts were in your bloodline. We can cancel those out because you can align yourself with your new bloodline. And then, I, so the linguistic, <laughs> yeah, I don't care if you come from a line of drug users and abusers. When you're born again, you're plucked out of that line. You're plucked out of that line, and you can cancel the thoughts and the echoes of anything that's in your DNA, and you can calibrate it to the sound. Your song, what is your song? Do you know there are t tribes in Africa that when the woman is pregnant and she's about ready to give birth, she goes off to herself and learns the baby's song. And then she comes, comes back, and she teaches the family, this is the baby's song. And that's what they sing to the baby when they pray. That's the baby's song. It has a, its own song. Yeah. I don't know, I can't remember the tribe, but I remember that story about how they have, the, every, every child has its own song. And so, you know, humans innately know this stuff. You don't have to be a scientist, a biologist, a geneticist to understand any of this because you have the spirit of wisdom inside of you. You have God, you have that book that is the open door to all eternity to teach you things. And you may not use all the big words that they do, but you understand the laws and the principles of and how it works. So li linguistics and the coding of our DNA, I wrote this in your book, I think, that this Dr. Hertak wrote about it in a book he called The Keys of Neoch, Enoch, where he, de where he indicated that the DNA has both light wave and mathematics behind their structure, yet it's also linguistic. You are, you are words. <laughs> you can be coded into words. You, and um, in fact, this is, this is the most interesting thing. He, he equates that the four nuclear bases relate to the four ancient letters recorded as yod He vav He, Yahweh's name. Yeah, you should have that in your books. yod He vav He, that these four nuclear bases. So you have, that, you have that helix of DNA, and there's little bars that go across, and there's pairs. He says he coincides that to the same sound of yod he vav he, right in your right in your right in your DNA. So the, so a lot of people believe that there's there's going to be an, uh, a new phase of medicine called wave medicine, where they um, <clears throat> they look at you, and they create a song from your DNA, and they use that song to resonate in you to recalibrate things that are out of alignment. Star Trek. <laughs> so, um, yes. They use sounds to heal somebody's bones if they are broken. I know if you put a tuning fork on a broken bone, you will jump through the roof, Marcy. <laughs> we all know that. Marcy and her tuning fork. Let's see if it's broken. <laughs> Ow! Yeah. And if the, pr if the patient screams in raging pain, it's broken. What's that? A cat's purr? Oh, that's right. The resident of a purring cat is, is, is for people a calming influence. That's why we like our feeling friends. So, so this, there's a company that looks at the music of your life, and they actually uh, take your mitochondria DNA, which is your ancestral DNA. They take it from you, and they uh, get a genetic code from your bodies and they create a sound. That's how they create your music and they'll do that for you for a price. <laughs> now, there, this, the same company claims that they have, uh, there's supposedly a lock of hair from Beethoven that was saved 
so that they got DNA from Be Beethoven, and they've unlocked his genetic code of sound in there, and I have a piece of his music that they decoded. And so even though he went deaf, he was still producing music because it was already written in his DNA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to um, talk now. So, so that you can see how frequencies affect, we saw how talking um, into water changes it. We're 70 to 90 percent water, whatever, and how it can change everything about you, change your organs. At Abraham and Sarah knew that. That's why they did. It changed their reproductive organs. And then um, now we're going to see, this is, these are some turtles that's on your on your paper, the turtles, I think it's on the back page. And it, this is a study of cymatics. It, 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 it means um, uh, the study of sound waves and how they can be visually reproduced. This visual sound, really. And you'll see how this works. It's through the work of uh, Luc Montagnier who discovered that DNA can be coded into radio waves and electromagnetic frequencies and transferred to the medium water. And it's a, it's a Greek word that means waves, cymatics. And we're going to watch the movie um, here. It'll explain all this that's written on your name, that this guy had turtles, and he noticed the patterns on the turtle with the different waters and how they produce uh, different designs on uh, the turtle's back. Now, how this started was uh, uh, Claudney, this guy named Claudney, he stretched some rubber over a plate, put some sand or something on top, took a violin bow and went on the side and it vibrated into a beautiful design. And then he used a different frequency or a different sound and it recreated another design. All very symmetrically beautiful. Where's, where's your, uh, on your paper, let me see your paper for a second. Uh, just, uh, just one, the picture. Okay. So this is the turtles in the water, and we're going to watch a video on that in just a second. And then on the back here, this is the Notre Dame Cathedral. And uh, the windows, you never notice why the Catholic Church have all these beautiful, intricate designs. It's from the frequencies uh, of salvagial tones that the monks sang. They had produced these designs. I think in the, in, and inspired, it was the the artists, artisans who created these things. And if they, there are stories, you can go on the internet and you see they've gone into some of these older cathedrals over there in Ireland and in England where they really go, where the, where the monks and the Catholics, nuns, and they would sing that the, that the designs and the carving of the wood are the same things that you can produce through cymatics with sounds. And make that you can recreate that same design with sounds. And this, uh, he's he's dead now. Doctor David Van Hoovering was a quantum physicist, a Christian one, and he was able to stretch some um, rubber, thin rubber, over a speaker, and he spoke in ancient Hebrew, you know, as best as he could, and they began to form those letters in the sand. But only Hebrew and only ancient, only ancient like Sanskrit or Hebrew, only those work. You can't say A, B, C, D, E, F, G and expect anything to happen. But the ancient sound, so you know it's, it's so those word, those letters are, they're, they're just not letters. They're just good to know them. It's good to understand them. Anyway, so these are the turtles. And then if you look over here, that's the, the window. And this is the floor. This is design on the floor. Who in heck would put a floor like that? They had to see it or feel it. They felt it through the sound of the singing and worshiping monks, through worship. This came out of worship. And I think that's really cool now that in our churches, we used to have that over here too, but the kids kept making a mess. <laughs> we used to have painting. and you could come. That's why you, when you can paint during worship, you come up with these amazing inspirations, right? And some people theorize that, you know, the, um, oh, what they call those things, is, you know, the, especially down in South America where they had those, those weird patterns in the groves and stuff, all the designs, that it was a fluctuation in the frequency, a spike or something, and, you know, nobody really knows. But it's interesting because they're the same designs that you can create with sound with this somatic thing. You can create these sounds. With it. Do you ever watch a computer, even your computer, and it has 
uh, all this design as you put your music on, that's what it's doing. It's going to the sound of the frequencies. Okay, so you can, you can physically change physical matter and create designs in nature with this sound. That's why when you line up with heaven that declares you are healed, you can create a new, a new design in your, in your body. So let's, let's go ahead and um, watch the, uh, that cymatic one. Alexander Lauterwasser is a photographer who makes captivating images of water under the influence of sound vibrations. As a child, Alexander raised tortoises at home in Heiligenburg, Germany. He came across illustrations of Clodney sound figures that bore a striking resemblance to a tortoise shell. Die, das war das Überraschende für mich, sehr enge Verwandtschaft haben mit Strukturen in der Natur und besonders hier mit dem Schildkrötenpanzer. Clodney figures are named after Ernst Clodney, an 18th century musician and physicist. He spread sand on metal plates and played them with a violin bow. The vibrations from the bow caused the sand to gather into beautiful geometric forms. Next, Alexander discovered the research of Hans Jenny, a Swiss physician, who took up and expanded on Clodney's work in the 1960s using fluid mediums and electronic amplification of sound. Jenny coined the term cymatics from the Greek for wave for this branch of study. Today, Alexander Lauterwasser is building on the work of his predecessors, employing modern sound and recording equipment. He has custom-built devices which allow him to stimulate various materials, such as sand or water, with sound vibrations whose frequencies can be precisely controlled. Um das Ganze auch dokumentieren zu können und festhalten zu können, wird das hier mit einer Videokamera gefilmt. Wenn das alles richtig eingerichtet ist, gehe ich an den Frequenzgenerator, beginne mit einer relativ tiefen Frequenz. The sand is pushed from areas where the vibration is strongest and collects where it is the weakest, forming patterns that correspond to the particular tone that is applied to the plate. The higher the frequency applied, the more complex and detailed is the pattern that results. Under controlled conditions, these forms are repeatable. That's just a real short, there's a lot of videos on that. You can see how the different patterns come up. And that's why the patterns in those cathedrals are like that. They're the same that they can reproduce. They can reproduce those same patterns on your paper with the sand and with sound and in the water like that. They can, they can reproduce those. So you know those are the frequencies being sung under those worship surfaces. Now, Katie, I almost forgot to say this. When we were talking about Schumann's resonant and the thunder and the lightning, and the color green, she brought up Revelation 4, right, Katie? Where it talks about the rainbow. What was it? Emerald green. What was around it? Thunder and lightning and voices. So it's, it's just a little microcosm of what we've all been talking about. It's great. I'll have to put that in the syllabus. That's a great verse to put in there that just kind of melts, you know, melts it all down into one good scripture. Okay, so the uh, okay, so number we're gonna move into just experiencing what we've been talking about. Okay, so some of you, probably quite a few of you, are have something wrong with your bodies or emotionally you struggle. So just now we're going to believe that God is going to touch you today, and you're going to be healed. You're going to get 
this uh, regulated and in harmony and experience the goodness of God this morning, right? The, perf the perfection, the shalom, shalom, peace of God. And so we're going to play, play a couple of different frequencies for you. And um, I'm going to tell you, before I play them, I'll tell you what the frequency is kind of known for. Now, I'm, I am a proponent of it's not just the music. Remember, the Holy Spirit is going to surf on the waves, on the resonance of it. So I am going to speak over the music as God leads me here and there, punctuating it with, I believe, God calling out things that you need. Okay, so I want you to receive it if you need it. Now, uh, my healing team is here, and they're going to come and lay hands on you without saying anything. Because he didn't say pray for the sick. He said lay hands on the sick, right? So they're just going to lay, and they're going to lay their hands on you, on your shoulders and up, maybe your arms, your shoulders and up, and your knees down. So you don't have to feel like, you know, where they're going to touch me. They're going to knees down, <laughs> shoulders up, and maybe your hands or arm, okay, because that's safe, right? All right, so, that, so that's going to, so, so be at peace with that. And they're only going to do that where they feel led and when they feel led. At some point, you might have a violin actually being played over you. So allow, and it won't be a 440 frequency. It will be a different frequency. So you allow the frequency of that sound to go into your body and regulate it, okay? And then we'll do this for a while, and then at some point we'll stop. And if we have any kind of testimonies, that's what we want. We want to hear your testimonies at that point, okay? So, where are you? So, J hey, JP, can you move this over? Yeah. Could you put it over there on the side? Thank you. Just off the side. Okay, so now for this part, I wish I usually get the pictures of our last time we did this so that you guys would know what I'm talking about. We all laid on the floor. <laughs> if you want to, this is not you need to or you have to. This is an invitation for where you feel comfortable. But a lot of people just find a spot on the floor and they just laid there and got comfortable, closed their eyes, and just let Holy Spirit hover over them. Remember, he hovered over them at the beginning of, of the earth when there was chaos and he separated out from the chaos light. So let him picture the Holy Spirit hovering over you like a bird, incubating health and healing in you. Okay, so if you're... If you can go ahead and maneuver now to a spot on the floor somewhere, it doesn't matter where you want to go, make sure there's a little bit of space between you and somebody else. And if you're in the center of a row, if you could kind of move out to the edges so that as the Holy Spirit is leading the healing team, they can lay, reach you, all right? And if you're watching online, I would suggest that you get comfortable at home and just listen and just receive. Anywhere. Oh, you do? On the Where at? On here? Oh. Oh, well, that doesn't do me any good. I mean, I just sent some emails. Oh, they're on this computer somewhere too. I just Okay, I need this chair. Uh, yes. Okay, if you're online, if you're watching online, please get comfortable and um, relax, and hopefully the sound will be coming through you in a manner that's going to be uh, useful. <laughs> Sometimes the sound does not come through good because it's compressed. All right, so just as you're getting relaxed and ready, I'm just going to tell you that the first hertz that we are praying is 528. And the 528 is known as the transformation or love hertz. It restores broken DNA, the source of disease, known to positively balance hormones, pelvic issues, premenopause, muscle tension, pericardium, heart muscles, weight problems, 
lymphatic and circulation issues. That's what the 528 is. Tar it doesn't mean that's all it targets it, but it, it kind of looks goes that way. Okay, are we ready? Everybody comfy? Everybody be comfy, relax. Lord, for your transformational frequencies on my body right now, calibrating my DNA, putting into order all my thoughts, and in my trembling and in my vibrations, 
am I resonating? I call upon you. And you deliver me. You pulled me back from the grave. You pour out your word and the frequency of love on your word, your spirit breath over me and it covers me, anointing me, creating order in my body and in my life. Your light penetrates the chaos in my mind. Your light penetrates to the organ that is out of order and in rebellion. Your light subdues rebellion in my body. I believe in your love for me. So I open my mouth wide and consume the heavenly substance of your word and the sound of your frequencies falling on me like a soft rain. I swallow like medicine and I am healed and delivered from all ungodly traps and pits. Oh, my heart is filled, filled with your words, your good words, your sound. And even now, I can hear the sound of you shouting, singing, let there be light. And you said it was good. feel my heart beginning to sizzle and it burst open, spilling out words of beauty and passion for you, my King. I adore you, Lord. I worship you. I give you thanks for your kisses right now, your love being showered upon me moisturizing every bone in my body. Inflammation is leaving my bones. Arthritis is a demonic name of the past. That sound is no longer in my frame. You restructure my structure, my framework. Your word, your sound is health to all my flesh. unforgiveness and strife. I forgive others of you as you have forgiven me, O oh my God. You have shown me mercy. I speak mercy right now over those who have hurt me, who have abandoned me, rejected me, slandered me. I speak love to them and understanding. shed in my heart an endless love cascading like a waterfall in my heart. I can love because you live inside of me. You are love and I'm living through you right now and I'm seeing through you right now. I'm even loving who I am. I love my body. I love my organs, my bones, my neural system, my immune system rejoices in your presence.
黑，发黑。Yahweh, my Lord, my God, my breath, my inspiration, my life, the light in my blood. I sever all infirmities off my body now. I release them. I unbind them. I unentwine them from my organs. For you took my infirmities and you bore them. You took my sicknesses and you bore them. Therefore, I refuse to allow any sickness to dominate my body. Your life flows within me and brings healing to every cell, every muscle, every bone, every organ, every fiber of my body. Shalom. Shalom. Going to walk with the shepherd in Psalm 23. As we transition to Psalm 23, this song, each Hebrew letter was assigned a note, and a classical musician translated it into a piece of music. So. The Lord, the Great Shepherd, is going to sing over you, Psalm 23. Is your best friend. He affirms you, protects you, guides you to the best springs. You will not be without any good thing. He makes you a resting place. Lie down in his green pastures, calibrated to his love language, his love frequency of 532. You could just rest in that pasture of thick, luxurious love. Sink into his love. He beds you down in lush meadows, and he offers you a resting place, an oasis of peace. He gives new life to your soul. True to His word, He 
He restores and revives your life. He restores and revives every organ in your body right now. He opens before you pathways of pleasure for you to stroll with him and his voice. Fear will never conquer you because you've been conquered by the Lord himself. He remains close to you. He's going to lead you through this darkness all the way out. He has no intention of you staying in any valley of death where sickness dwells. He takes you out of this place. And with his staff, he plunders the enemy in for you and in your stead. And he guides you out with his light at your feet and the light at your head like a lamp. And he says, follow me out of this darkness. I have a table set for you. And he puts oil on your head and he gives you a cup and it's overflowing. It brims with blessings. It has a fragrance of the Holy Spirit and you can drink of it and you can drink all of it. Don't let one drop fall to the ground. Drink it all. His beauty and his love will chase after you every day of your life. For goodness and mercy will follow you. And he pulls you out of valleys of darkness. The valleys of sickness and death. This is where sickness and death dwell. You are no longer a captive in this dark valley. He pulls you out into light, into his green pastures. And he takes you into a 432 experience. Calibrating your body to the sound that began in the beginning of creation.
there is a door open in heaven. And the breath of God breathes on you and you understand it to say, Ascend, come up here with me and I will show you your destiny. I will show you your body, your temple. I will show you the glory resonating in your organs. Growths and tumors have no right to be in your body. Where the lightning flash and the thunders crash and pulse from the throne and the blazing torches surround the throne. On this crystal sea, it's not a storm. There's peace here. And in this place, you will see that every organ and every tissue in your body functions in the perfection that God created it to function. Any malfunction is forbidden in your body in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. His word is manifesting in your body, causing all growths to disappear. Arthritis is a thing of the past. And we tell your bones and your joints to function properly in Jesus' name. All neural pathways from the brain, from the tongue, down through the spine, down to the very soles of your feet, we command chaos to leave. heartbeat is normal. Your heart beats with the rhythms and the vibrations and the frequencies of heaven. Carrying the life of God throughout your whole body, restoring life and health abundantly. You have a strong heart. I command the blood cells to destroy every disease germ in your body, every virus, every malfunction, every anomaly, every genetic disposition for sickness and disease. We command it to loose your body now in Jesus' name. aggressively repelling the blows and the assaults of the liar. God cannot lie. My sins have been canceled and annulled. Therefore, I have boldness and confidence to come into the very holy of holies through the blood of Jesus Christ that speaks to me. Not judgment, but mercy. 
His compassion heals me. eternal God is my refuge and underneath of the everlasting arms he will thrust out the enemy from before you and he will say destroy happy are you O daughter of Israel happy are you O, o son of mine I have saved you I am your shield I am your sword your enemies will shall submit to you and you shall tread down their high places. There is none like God to rescue you. To live in peace. To drink of the wine of heaven. To be moistened by the dews dropping from his unseen realm. His heavens drip over you now. same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, permeates you, your veins, your muscles, sending healing throughout your whole body. In Jesus' name, I forbid your body to be deceived in any manner. Body, you will not be deceived by any virus or disease germs. Neither will you work against life or health in any way. Every cell of your body supports life and health. And a new song arises from within you. And multitudes will see and be in awe of the love and the mercy of God. He is creating and building a testimony in you for all to see and know the authentic love of the Father who cares for you, loves you, sent His Son for you to deliver you, redeem you, to give you a new bloodline, new genetics. I cheerfully and joyfully drink in his presence now. I'm happy. I'm joyful. My heart is filled with the good medicine to all my body and refreshes me. No longer weary. No longer fatigued. No longer without strength. He tunes me up to his sounds, his strength his love and he says I give power to the weak strength to those who are fatigued I give them wings like that of an eagle I renew their youth I feed them with good things with long life I satisfy you drink 
drink deeply from the spring of living water. Joyfully drink in his presence. Go from strength to strength. given all my iniquities. You have healed all my diseases. You have redeemed my life from destruction. You have satisfied my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed as the eagles. And you grace me with your strength and empower me with your glorious presence and let your joy flood my whole being. Joy allows me to stand firm and grasp the sword to the finish. I will not be moved, for you are with me. Cancer is not permitted in this house. All unwanted growths are disintegrating right now in the name of Jesus Christ because the blood of Jesus is being poured out upon your flesh. It is the eternal solvent. depression, dread, loneliness, fear. You're being swept out of the temple now. There's an imperishable seed that carries the DNA of miracles, signs, wonders, and every form of healing and deliverance on the sound waves, 432, as his divine nature is activated in your bodies. Your heart is fertile soil. His word is a seed that is being embedded in the soil of your heart, producing inexhaustible crops of a hundredfold. His word is constantly being breathed in your cells, never stop speaking to you. His voice is never silent.
He never ceases to exercise extraordinary power upon your body and your mind. Even now, as I'm speaking out his word, I, you can feel his holy and perishable seed is germinating and producing life in you. Calibrating your DNA. Cling to the word of life and never let go. For he seals his covenant with his blood. It is ratified by the outpouring of the cross. And the resurrection power pours out on this last generation called the resurrection generation to live in the life and the power of the cross, to rise above the fray and the storms of this world, to know peace even when there is no peace, to be the eye of the storm in the darkness, to transform the atmosphere, to speak to creation and have creation rejoice at the sound of the bride coming forth from your innermost being. Now is the time for the bride to rise up in the strength of her bridegroom king, joined together at the hip to enforce light and order out of this chaos in your homes, in your churches, in your schools, in your own bodies. The eternal lives inside of you. There is no death that can threaten you. You are free from sin, guilt, and shame, which translates you are free from pain, sickness, and death. Life is your eternal gift. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Ben Yehovah Rapha, Jesus, the very Son of God, our healer. I'm going to end this session by speaking the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet, over you. Each letter has a creative anointing. Let the anointing of each letter come inside you. It's living. It's an organism. It's life. It's him, himself. It's a part of who he is, his essence. Aleph. Bait. Gamal Dalit Hey Bav Zain Chet Tet Yod Kaf Lamed Mem Nun Samak Ayan Pei 
ساده کوف رش شین تاف I am the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, the olive and the tof. I am complete. I have everything you need. There are no other ingredients in the universe but me. I speak my words over you and you are healed. Would anybody like to share an experience or something they heard, saw, felt, changed? Anybody? Anybody want to share anything? Do you feel any different? <laughs> I'm still getting up. <laughs> you pop right up. <laughs> All right. Heaven to earth. Heaven to earth. <laughs> Heaven to earth. <laughs> Woohoo. Re enter the atmosphere. No crash and burn, please. Get the mic. Okay, guys, we're gonna we're gonna listen to a few testimonies before we uh, exit the building. I want to just say before we start, too, like with the testimonies, when I was sitting back there with the first uh, song that we played, I was like playing with the beat on my hands, like sitting on my lap. And I was just thinking about that. And I'm thinking, I'm playing the beat, the frequencies through your body by playing it on your hands and then hearing it. And then I was thinking more into it. And I was like, if you someone asked, I don't know who it was, um, how do you recalibrate yourself? And I was thinking about everything that Kathleen said. And if you take anything away from this, is that everything in the earth does that for you? So like Kathleen was saying, everything that is in this earth, there's a frequency to that recalibrates that naturally for you if you take advantage of it. And um, I was just thinking too about some, for some people it may be dancing, like a heavenly dance patterns, heavenly, he heavenly patterns, songs or humming, or one cool thing I thought about was when you speak in tongues. So you may have that heavenly frequency coming through your voice to be healed. And it's not only just for your body, it's also for someone else's too. Okay, I want to, before you speak uh, and share your testimony, I want to add on to that about the movement and dancing. You dance because the frequency is doing something inside your body, and your body is wanting to be in, in harmony and calibration with the beat of the music. And so the closer you are to the beat of the music, the better you feel. And I know some of us claim you have two left feet. Stop doing that. I know you all dance at home. And I know you all want to dance in church, but you're all are like, Looking at the person around you, I'm not going to dance. You all want to dance. Just forget about the person around you and start dancing. There are studies done with people with MS, and they have given them, they make them dance. And they are being healed of Alzheimer's because it reconstructs. When you, when you calibrate with the music, it reconstructs your DNA and your genetics, and it, it's actually, actually healing. Um, there's something else you said, too. 
songs, tongues, anything. The earth, Worship. it's all it's all meant to. Because dancing is very important. I was playing the beat on my lap. Maybe that's what yes. it was. Yeah, the dancing is very important when you when you move to the beat of the music, no matter what it is. Yeah. So it's not just one thing or one song or one sound. It's all of it. I was uh, feeling a big uh, peace in in my whole being inside, and the first person that came uh, to me and touched me, uh, it w even though if it was uh, the hands that were very soft uh, in my on my own shoulders, uh, I don't know. In one moment, she took away or he took away uh, the hands uh, of my shoulders, but I was feeling very hot inside uh, and the hands uh, was the the weight uh, was uh, still on my shoulders hmm. so remember they measure the hands of healers and yeah, yeah I was same the, i was feeling the heat uh, coming from wow. the hands of that person in my shoulders wow. <laughs> and at the same time i was just uh, thanking god uh, for all the goodness that those uh, hands vibrations and um, bolts uh, were going into my body. I'm fixing up everything inside me. Amen. 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 Um, I noticed the difference, almost like different colors, but I didn't see colors, but I felt the different anointing mm -hmm. as there must have been a flag. And then I opened my eyes and she was, you know, she had moved on. And I could see the colors of the flag when she was over me. Oh. And then the violin, how it, it had such a different operation. Mm -hmm. And it even seemed to fluctuate between people. As she moved the area around, mm -hmm. and you were mentioning about tongues, there was somebody every now and then that would just yield into tongues near me and I was like, oh. That's good. <laughs> like it just, you know what I mean? Like I could connect immediately with uh -huh. it. And then when you would say certain things that uh -huh. had scriptures that yeah. triggered in me that yeah. were already there, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it was almost like it, it, it released yeah. more. I just had a real, the that real, kind of, of experience through yeah. the sounds yeah. and the movement and, and, the, and the different, I think five different people touched me and I could tell a, a slight difference in each one. Hmm. It was really, I mean, all wonderful. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but it just, there was such a divine, mm -hmm. like a connection of unity and family, yeah. oneness. Yeah. God, yeah so I guess when you come to the ordering, it just seemed very collective mm. and unique mm -hmm. and oneness. Mm -hmm. So. Amen. <laughs> yeah, good, that's good. I must have been touched seven times, <laughs> and um, and it was seven things that I was praying about inside of me. Oh wow! And um, and the last person touched my mind, like they put their hands on my head, and I have a testimony that that the enemy tried to take my mind last year, but the Lord told me, "Wake up." You're not going anywhere. <laughs> and I was healed. And I felt like the last person touched my mind. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> because you know what I need. And I felt like seven people actually came to me. I guess I must have needed it really bad. Because they came and I was so blessed. Mm -hmm. And so thank you so much for what you did today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Again, for Maria, um, I don't remember the sequence. There was so much that happened, but I was sitting there, and I'm not sure if the hands were there first, or. But the, the voice said, "Do what Maria told you to do with the humming." So I started to hum, and then the electricity that <laughs> went through that person's <laughs> hand when I started to hum. I mean, I felt like I was lifted out of my seat. I know I wasn't, but I felt like I was. And then this beautiful. I can't even describe it. White light came rushing down at me. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> you know, like I was. And then um, 
the colors, I don't often see in colors, and it was red. I kept seeing this ruby red, brilliant color. Like, And then, I got to tell you this, I'm standing there and I got this warrior outfit on. I'm gonna cry. Mm. And the wind was softly, there's like some movie, okay, like softly blowing. But I had this giant red ruby on my chest, like right here. And the Lord said, you have a battle. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> good. You're shy. <laughs> um, oh, the first thing um, I noticed, the first person that touched me, I felt an enormous amount of heat, and I knew that she was a woman. So as she walked away, I opened my eyes to look. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there is such a strong anointing. And then um, I, was, I was sitting down, or sitting up, upright rather on the ground and I was told to turn around and face this way because at first I was facing that way and when I turned around I was also told to lift my hands so I lift my hands and when I lifted my hands I felt this sweet presence just pushing me back mm -hmm. all the way and then I I fell back and then um, I was down for a while and I sat back up and there was this man named Rick that walked by me and he had this enormous amount of heat coming from him and I thought he was going to stop at me and, and I was like noticing that he was in worship and I was like, I'm sorry to interrupt your, your program, sir, but I'm going <laughs> to touch your feet, something, I'm getting something out of this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I touched his feet, and I could feel this transfer come over me, and I just began to weep so hard, and I thought I was going to lose one of my eyelashes, and that is something <laughs> I don't deal with well. So I got up and went to the restroom. <laughs> but I, I just want to say, this is one of the best conferences that I've been to. Yeah. It's so anointed. All the staff is so anointed. And whoever blessed me with that book, I just want to say um, that you may be blessed and multiply for being such a kind sower. All right. God bless everybody. Okay, at first I had a lot of crying going on. I don't know why. And then I'd laugh and then I'd cry. But it, uh, when the violin was playing, that, that song was on, um, I was made to put my hands like this. And somebody, somebody, and there wasn't really anybody there, but my hands were being held the whole time. And then there was people next to me, and they were scooping stuff out of my stomach. They were mm. taking something out of me. I don't know what it was, but it looked like burgundy noodles I'm like what the heck was that <laughs> so gonna find out from God what was removed and then later on with the last song that sounded Middle Eastern I was I had my eyes shut and there was just all this undulating purple uh, patterns going and somebody grabbed my ankles and my my left hip was out of joint and that that baby is back in hey, so it's like yeah, yeah. yes <laughs> So I wanted to say that um, I was prostrate on the ground and somebody put their hand on my back and it was like a, um, breathing. So I had to inhale and exhale deeply three times. And I know the person at some point walked away, but I still felt that there was a hand on my back. And then at some point when the violin started, it was almost this wailing where I didn't want to overtake mm. the place, but it was almost like you a balled up cry when you're in a fetal position. 
So I had that twice, and I was just thanking God. So that those were my two main experiences. Amen. So I just wanted to add that music that the violin played over, that Michelle uh, composed that music in 432 for today. Um, when the sound was playing, um, I felt almost like a baby. I was like a baby inside my mom's placenta. And it was just amazing because it was total peace. Hmm. And I felt like I was outside of earth. I was completely in another dimension and I felt so relaxed. And it was so good because it was perfect. Amen. And it was like I was whole and complete. And I was just, it was like everything was perfect. I, 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 it wasn't like something was missing. Not a, it's, it's, it's not about a something, but it was just like almost like a state that it was complete. It was beautiful because I was just, it was almost like a, I was in him, inside of him. And it was amazing. It was another completely world, area, dimension, realm. It was perfect. I was in him. It was beautiful. Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Like everybody else, I, most of what was happening to me was was within the realm of, of music and what music from God, especially in such a universal language. Very deep things, very good things, conflictual things, but everything was either coming out or going in, and there was no barrier between me and God, and I can't always say that, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Well, entwined. Well, everybody should be leaving here with a roar <laughs> and a sound. Come uh, on, come on up, Cassandra. She's. We thank you, Sandra, for your work, you and oh, Irene. Thank you. My pleasure. So I guess this is a good time to tell this story. I've told my friends here at the church. So. You know, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, my husband is a retired police officer and he still works in the field. And, you know, I think, you know, there's this spiritual warfare going on and, you know, he's feeling it. And so he was having this pressure in his heart. So he comes home and we're like, I was like, that's it. And I sit him down and I just put some um, soaking music on and I set his Bible on his chest and I just have him breathe and I just be quiet. And then he's like, man, you know, I feel so much better. And I was like, we're not done yet. <laughs> so then I put some, like, fun muse, some fun dancing Christian music. And we started dancing, like, totally goofy. And, like, just, you know, and started laughing so hard. I'm telling you guys, I live in a condo. I literally saw little spiritual cockroaches <laughs> running I'm serious, running out of my house and going under the wall into my neighbor's house, going through the air conditioner, out over there, across the street, and it showed me. They don't like that fun stuff. They don't know what's in here. They only know what comes out of here. They only know how we act. So, you know, I say it a lot, fake it till you make it. You know, you might be in a bad mood, you're having some anxiety, just put some funny music on and just start shaking and dancing, and I'll bet you it's gonna go away. Amen, all right, amen. And, and how come I never see that shaking in church? I, 
I don't know. Now that I know, I'm going to tap you on the shoulder. I got, this is dancing music. I'm just saying. This fear of man thing's got to quit. You got to worship the king and the king alone. He's your only audience. Doesn't matter who's next to you. So you want to do a cartwheel? Just make sure you wear pants. That's all. That's the only requirement. All right. So I, I, I'm just going to speak the Hebrew blessing over you, okay? The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, right? But, okay, Yehovah, he who exists, kneels before you to present to you gifts. He surrounds you with a hedge of protection. And his face shines over you. His face shines with beams of love and light into your whole being, body, soul, and spirit. Bring it in into order. And he sets in place for you love, sustenance, beauty, and friendship. And he arranges your life so that you will walk in the prosperity of the shalom, complete peace, and goodness of Jehovah. Yehovah, yod heh vav -Heh. And this way, his name is put upon you. And you can go out and glorify his name. Jesus. Bye. <laughs> All right. Stay on our mailing list for updates of new classes. And, you know, they're all different, a little bit different. So, like, I know next, next month we will do baptism and probably something else. So stay tuned. And we have a marriage class here by Rick and Trudy. If you uh, just want to enhance your marriage, it doesn't mean you're having problems. Or maybe you're planning on getting married, something like that. It, you don't have to be married to come, right, Rick and Trudy? Right? And it's here. It's over in the where you ate lunch on Tuesday nights at 7. Okay, it's a six weeks course. It's excellent. I encourage you. Anybody can go to that. Okay? Amen. Amen. Amen.